Is that clean, Jaws? Yippers. 10-4. 10-4. Copy that. 6-7. That's a big... My wife's in... My wife is in the room. It's 10-67, okay? Is, is that still a number? Remember me and my buddy used to say that to each other. Can you talk right now? 6-7. Wife's in the kitchen cooking dinner. Um. So yeah, so that was me. In Victoria a couple of days ago. I don't know why I'm telling the story. Like everybody said, oh, Clint, you should tell that story on your podcast. And I'm like, I don't even know how to make that story good. It's not funny, really. <clears throat> it's not that interesting. It's just something that usually happens quite often. We're sitting at um, a pub. On a patio. I think it's called Garrick or Garrick Pub. Let's just say it's Garrick Park, uh, Pub. Okay, it's beside that uh, that other pub that's has an Irish theme. Okay, the girls, they walk around in Irish skirts. You know those skirts? Kilts, I think it's called a kilt. A skirt that you wear when you're playing the bagpipes. Back when it was in, in like 2004, and now they look like they're walking Christmas trees. They got to do something different at that Irish, uh, Irish pub, Irishman pub. Anyways, I'm sitting at the Garrick. I don't know why I said that. I'm sitting at the Garrick. We're sitting outside at the patio. Four of us, a couple of friends. We're sucking on some beers. Guy comes right up to me because the railing is right there. Okay. People are walking by. And guy, all of a sudden I hear this voice right to my right. And it's like Clinton Jaws. Clinton Jaws. Oh my God, you're Clinton Jaws. And I'm like, oh, hey, dude, how you doing? Yeah, I, 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 I've been watching your uh, your podcast. It's it's awesome. Made me feel good. We talked for a good five minutes. Anyways, after he left, the group of people that I was with, they couldn't stop laughing. And they couldn't stop bugging me. And maybe that's why I posted the video. Because every five minutes, Tommy would go, Clinton Jaws? Is that you? Clinton Joss, <laughs> you had to be there, okay? Anyways, I actually asked him. I said, oh, right on, dude. Did you subscribe? And he's like, no, I haven't subscribed, but I'm gonna. It's official summer is here right now. Today is the start of summer. And I'm going to be doing some outdoor podcasts out at the lake. It's going to be good. Uh, yeah, my shirt. Okay. Hey, look at that. I got this, this uh, kind of cool. I got this shirt sent to me by a guy. And just a short blurb. Okay. I'm not going to bore you. I'm going to read it. Clint. I made it through depot and now the real test begins. Your tips and tricks, tips and tricks, help me more than words can describe your friend, Constable Horner. And my wife was like, my wife almost got choked up reading it. She's like, oh my God, that's so nice. And I'm like, yeah, that is, it, it is kind of like it, it kind of, um, I don't know, makes me a little moist. It felt good. Got me a cool shirt from Depo, I guess, I'm guessing. And you know what, dude? The real test, it does begin. And, oh God, man, try to enjoy it. Life gets so serious now. Stay away from girls. You know what, work 15 years, or 20, but I say 15. Work 15 years if you can. Invest now. Maybe, man, you, we're about to go through a recession. Maybe net right now is not the best time. 
right now is a stupid time to buy a house. Think about buying a house a year from now when everything crashes and you're going to get a good deal on that place. Do your five years or whatever at your detachment. And man, I wish I did this. When you get transferred, try renting out your house. I know it's hard to do, but try your, try your damnness to rent out your house. I'd have $4 million right now. I'd have $4 million right now if I figured out a way. And congratulations, dude. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. A couple days ago. You know what? I just can't. You know how there's people out there, out there that just, they can't stay away from the sh- You know what I mean? They can't, they can't get, it's called, they're called magnets. I'm kind of a magnet. I take the kids to McDonald's the other day. And I, maybe, I don't know if I should tell, start this. I'm going to tell you about my neighborhood. The neighborhood that I live in in town. It's a pretty good neighborhood. This is the neighborhood I grew up in. There is actually a guy up the street. Real nice guy. We'll call him Barry, okay? Barry's a real nice guy. And every day he walks by the house with his dog and he's, you know, he says a smart ass comment. I say one back and we joke around. I've known him all my life, really. And uh, yeah, so there's, there's, there's great moments to the neighborhood. The other day I take my kids to McDonald's. We go through McDonald's drive through and it's like $52. And I'm coming back onto the street I live on and I'm, I'm coming up. Okay. Here's the stop sign. Okay. I'm coming up to the stop sign, but I have to slightly go past the stop sign because there's a truck sticking out. Okay. Across from me. So I can't see, I'm turning left. I can't see the vehicles that are coming up the street because this, this, this truck is blocking my view. Not a big deal. So I creep up, I stop, and I see a red truck coming up. Red truck is quite a ways away from me. I'm not in his, I'm not in his way at all. It doesn't have to swerve to miss me. He just, I'm not even impeding his roadway. And I'm blinder than a bat, but I could see two guys in this truck losing their minds. They're, they're jumping around and hopping around. I'm with my kids, okay? They're hopping around, and when they get closer to me, they're both going like this. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding? And as they get up to right in front of me, I go, and I don't, I don't know what's going on. And my kids are like, are they mad at you, Dad? And I'm not saying anything because I got kids in the car, and I was silent. And I watch the car, I turn left, and I'm driving down my road, and I look in the rear view mirror, and I see that the car, the truck, up top of the hill, he pulls into a driveway. So he lives on my same road. And I, uh, I'm agitated, okay? And I tell the kids to go inside and go eat their McDonald's inside, we're gonna eat it in the truck. And like, Damn, we just, I said, no, go, just go. I'm just gonna check something out. Because why wouldn't I, right? Am I wrong to not follow up on that? I feel like, okay, those are fighting gestures. And you know what? I I could use a good shit kicking. I I almost feel that way. And I I can't let it go. I'm not going to live on that same road and wonder who that was. And I don't know why I'm telling you this story, but I start driving up the street and I see the vehicle and I'm like, what? It's not him. It's not Barry. I look over and Barry's sitting in the driveway with his buddy. A couple of big boys. And I'm like, that's not... I drive, I drive by and I stop about 100 feet away, maybe 50 feet. And I'm like, that was Barry. Barry did that? And I'm like, no, I, I got to say something to Barry. So I do a U-turn 
And I pull up right in front on the other side of the road, right in front of him. And he's drinking a can of beer. And I'm like, hey, guys. At first, I, I'm kind of, part of me is thinking it was a joke. Because this guy's a jokester. And I'm like, uh, hey, man. Uh, are you guys mad at me? And his buddy. Standing there, he goes, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, why is he laughing? That's weird. Were they joking around or not? And I'm thinking, I'm not leaving until I know for sure that they weren't jo- they that it was either a joke or not a joke. And I go, uh, what did I do wrong? And then Barry goes, well, he's drinking his can of beer. His back's towards me. He won't even look at me. And he goes, you kind of, you kind of ran that stop sign there, Clint. <laughs> And his face went beet red. He took a swig of his beer. So I know now that they, they, they meant those gestures. And I said, uh, look behind you. Yeah, see? You see that truck sticking out? I was just creeping in front of it. I had to go past the stop sign a little bit. You didn't have to swerve to miss me or anything. There was no close call. And he goes, yeah, okay, I'll tell John to pull in and tuck in his vehicle next time. Big, long pause. I'd say about seven seconds. I'm just sitting there, the window down. They're not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. And there's absolutely no way I'm going to go, okay, guys, bye, have a good day. So without saying anything, I drove away. I come home, I tell the wife, you know what she says? You cannot go through, you cannot go without a summer, without having some kind of controversy. <laughs> I told my dad, you know what my dad said? I guess people just don't like you. <laughs> but honestly, we wouldn't even be having this conversation if I would have just went in the house. Is that good? You hide from it? It's funny when somebody freaks out at you like that. Like I pulled up. You wanted to fight 10 seconds ago. Why don't you want to fight now? How immediately they back down from their... uh, What is going on with this guy? Where does that anger come from? I've been driving all my life and I've never been, I don't think, that mad at somebody. I've been in some close calls. Their fault. And I've never gotten mad at them. I just brought, drive by them. I don't even look at them. If I didn't know the guy, I would have got really mad at him. I would have said some nasty, bad things. But, And I don't want to sound like a puss. But when I was sitting there, I'm like, oh, you're a weirdo. That's what I was thinking. After all these years, you're actually weird. You're a weird dude. You think you know somebody, but they're actually phony. And that's what I can't stand. I can't stand phony, fake people, even though he finally showed me his true self. And I wasn't angry. It was more of like a disappointed. Like now I got to live around you. We, We had a pretty good thing going and you have to go and ruin that. And he had an opportunity to say, hey, Glenn, I got a little carried away. Yeah, sorry about that. Something. Then I started thinking because I assumed that they didn't know it was me, even though he knows my vehicle and he knows I drive a Jeep. He knows the color and everything. Maybe he did know it was me. That kind of ups it, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I knew it was you. (laughs) Told the woman, I said, uh, I'm going to do a podcast before we're going to the lake. She's like, what? I'm like, oh, my God. Well, I guess we're going to meet you there. Would that be so terrible? She, uh, I know I always talk about her, but she day drinks. Like she doesn't drink at night. She, when we go out on the water, she day drinks and then stops drinking at night. Making me look like an alcoholic because I don't day drink. I drink at night. So now I'm drinking alone with nobody. She's already done her drinking and she's like, oh. Looks like somebody has a problem. It's not fair. I don't like these day drinkers. Makes me look like an alcoholic at night. You still drinking? I just started. Blame me because you quit? Gonna take some calls, guys. 
going to take a couple of calls and will you subscribe to my channel? And hit a like. You're supposed to do that stuff, okay? Even if you don't want to. I'd really appreciate it. You know, I was going to talk about Tamara Lich. Whatever her name is. I think I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll do a short clip of that. She was arrested. They took her from Calgary. <laughs> All the way to Ottawa. First in its history that they would arrest somebody for mischief. I can't help it. I can't. She had a Canada-wide warrant, guys, for mischief. I've maybe had four or five of those in my entire career where you, you come across a guy and there's a Canada-wide warrant. Do you know how many people I've arrested that have warrants out of Alberta? Current charges. Bad people. You call up Alberta to see if they're going to extend the warrant, and they don't. Alberta doesn't want them coming back. The simplest, but most basic charge in the criminal code is mischief, basically. And they gave her a Canada-wide warrant because she breached one of her conditions. Unheard of. You tell me another example when that, ex when did that happen? When this is the first of its kind. This has never happened in Canada. Canada-wide warrant for mischief the girl has no criminal record and they held her in jail she went over to ottawa had a bail hearing and they hold her in jail like she's a threat really breached her condition because she took some photograph with some guy that she's not allowed to have contact with you know what i would have did with her i mean if it was truly a breach this breach seems so weak and to be held for it is ridiculous. But what I would have done, if I would have found that breach, I would have wrote a PTA. Here, go to court in a couple of months on this breach. If your original charge goes through. They fly her that you pay for to Ottawa. <laughs> Arrest her and transport her to Ottawa over this BS. So political, so reckless. Is that the word? Corrupt. This went off. I didn't think I was going to. There's so much to say about. There's so much there. There is so much there. I mean, people People are comparing Canada. Have you, have you heard what Joe Rogan said about Canada? Calling uh, Trudeau a dictator? The whole world thinks we're nuts. They think Canada's nuts. And it is pretty crazy. Trudeau calls all those truckers basically pigs. Way right pigs. Um, usually racist in nature. And now you see the consequences. I'm going to take your bank accounts. I'm going to hold you in jail. He's behind it all. Am I wrong? No judge in their right mind would ever hold anybody for mischief, let alone approve a warrant Canada-wide for mischief. You guys don't even know who I'm talking about, probably. I'm going to edit it, th all this out, I guarantee you. Anyways, it just popped up on my screen just now. That's why I brought it up. Okay, I just got to touch, touch on this. July 17, 2022. Indiana. Indiana mall shooting. Okay, this guy with a rifle, several magazines. He goes into the mall where the food court is, just starts killing people. Killed three people. Total injury were, were five people. And out of nowhere, this civilian, this bystander, what do you, what, what, whatever you want to call him, from a long ways away, took out his handgun and took this guy out. Shot this guy. Killed this guy. And I thought, well, that's a story. That's a story that all we, all we ever hear about is mass shootings, school shootings, why we shouldn't have guns. But what a great argument on the reason to have guns. This is why. Obviously, and, and the cop described this bystander as a police officer, even though he wasn't a police officer. He knew how to use his gun. He knew completely knew how to use it. 
He was directing people after he did the sh- after he killed the bad guy. And isn't that what it's all about? Aren't those the people you want to have a good you want to have a gun? They're not crazy, they're not criminal, and they know how to use the weapon. That's all you need. Those are the guns you don't take away from people. Now, could you imagine if that gun was taken away from him? If they didn't allow him to carry a gun, more people would have been murdered. I just want to show you a short clip of this. Five people shot. A 22-year-old. That was the guy who killed the bad guy. has his cell phone. He was 22 years old. And he took this guy down. And you know what, other, you know what people are going to say about this, right? A gun killed those three people. A gun. Were just as surprised as everyone else was. They said there were no indicators that he was uh, violent or unstable. Many more people would have died last night if not for a responsible armed citizen that took action very quickly within the first two minutes. Oh, we're just going to dust that part off, right? Guaranteed the news outlets have dusted this. Have you heard of this one? Have you heard of this? Of this shooting. His actions were nothing short of heroic. Um, he engaged the, the gunman from quite a distance with a handgun, uh, was very proficient in that, very tactically sound. And as he moved to uh, close in on the suspect, he was also motioning for people to exit behind him. Um, he has, to our knowledge, uh, he has no police training and no uh, military background. This young man, Greenwood's good, good Samaritan, acted within seconds, stopping the shooter and saving countless lives. Our city, our community, and our state is grateful for his heroism in this situation. Can't do that in Canada. Trudeau would never allow that in Canada. You know what he said the other day about guns, right? Guns are for hunting. Guns can be used for hunting or for sport shooting in Canada, and the, but you can't use a gun for self-protection in mm-hmm. Canada. That's not a right that you have in the Constitution or anywhere else. If you try and buy a gun and say it's for self-protection, no, you don't get that. You get it for hunting. You can get it for sport shooting. You can take it to the range. If you listen to Trudeau, which I guess we have to, if that would have happened in Walmart or Canadian Tire, how about that, the parking lot? Gunman dies, bystanders, bystander bystander kills gunman saves multiple people and is now charged with manslaughter like a lot we canadians knock america not rightfully so you could shoot at targets (laughs) but it is not your right to defend yourself with a firearm That should make anybody frustrated. Hearing that guy talk about that and then seeing something like this. And why why am I... I never used to think this way. When I was a police officer, I was like, great, more guns off the street, the better. But there's nothing wrong with having a, a, a person that's sane, not a criminal, that knows how to use it, having a firearm. Like me. I had a firearm my majority of my life, I feel. I was damn good at it. And the moment I retire, they take it away. I mean, don't you want me to have a gun so I could do something like that? I know I'm talking a lot, but I just got to show you this. I just got to show you this. I seen this this morning. And it's, why is Trudeau appearing in random places for no apparent reason? And I thought, yeah, why is he? He's playing dress up at the Calgary Stampede. He's everywhere. Why is it? And he got a haircut and that worries me. Whenever this guy gets a haircut, I mean, he's thinking something like something. I feel like something's going on. Anytime he does any campaigning, he gets a haircut first. And I'm like, I got to read this. Why is he? Nobody knows. Why is it? Why is he in random places right now? Does it make any sense to you? Inflation is up. Gas is up. If if we're not in a recession, we're about to go on one. Like, why aren't you? What are you doing? Look, and there's a there's a picture of him here. Look at this guy. Canada's fallen to pieces, and he's he's at a daycare center. No man in their right mind 
would laugh that hard at a two-year-old. No two-year-old is that funny. I'm telling you that right now. And he's like, take the picture quick now. Look at me. Pretty demented to be laughing that hard. And it's not even his children. Okay? He's the first man that likes other people's children. Like, come on. You phony baloney. What are you doing? Playing again. And it's, look at the haircut. That's god awful. Stick with that haircut. I, 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 I promise you, there's a good reason why he got reelected or elected in the first place. And there's another article that says it. His hair. His hair got him elected. And I don't know what, maybe Sophie thinks he looks younger the shorter it is, but that is a god awful haircut. Keep it up though, please. Oh, we, we got buckets and water. <laughs> Oh my God. If you were strolling through the park on Friday, you might have seen loafers without socks. Trudeau telling stories to a children's day camp while perched on a stump. You can't make this up. Oh, and then, then he, I guess he's going to churches too, and he writes this on his Twitter. Gotta read this. Church is more than a place of worship. It's a place to come together. Build a community and care for the most vulnerable. Why is he buggy so much, Clint? Why do you think? He's keeping you safe. That's what it's all about. That's what he's doing. Oh man, there's gonna be more COVID lockdowns. He's keeping you safe. That's what that's what he's gonna run on the next election. And is he is he gearing up? Is he gearing up to hold another election? There's no way he would be right now. But you you kind of think that. What's stopping him? Really? He did it last year. And if you're going to run, if you're going to, he's campaigning. And I guarantee his message is going to be keeping you safe. Vaccine, COVID lockdowns, keeping you safe. You ever think that COVID lockdowns actually bring. They actually bring down the price of oil. That'd be a good idea if you want to bring down the price of oil, right? We're not going to pump it. That would make more sense. But because of climate change and his theory, they won't pump it, even though we're exporting it, importing it from other places, really saving the climate there. But that's one way, right? Could it be that a recession and more COVID lockdowns would actually make him look good right before the next election? There's nothing stopping Canada from re-entering COVID lockdowns again starting in the fall. You watch. Oh, it's getting so old. I don't know. Do I even want to talk about this? Who cares? Oh my God, he's he's picking cherries, guys, and laughing. It's so funny picking a cherry. It is hilarious. Picking cherries is hilarious. Look at look at the ambition, the motivation, the interest. And he gets to dress up again. He gets to be bucket man for a day. Look at my bucket. Do you like my arm? Oh man. It's photo opportunities. So bizarre. Oh, we got another hilarious moment there. I don't even understand how he finds it in himself to laugh. Like, what are you laughing about? He really is oblivious. BC fruit growers in Kelowna. Well, you got to go there, right? (laughs) Don't you, shouldn't you be focusing on the reserves and fresh running water? Shouldn't, isn't that, shouldn't that be your focus? Daycares and churches? Anyways, enough. Let's take some calls. Hey, Clint. Uh, my name's Sam. I'm 28 years old. Um, just want to start by saying I do really like the podcast. Um, not a ton of RCMP content out there, so it's definitely cool to see. Um, so my question uh, goes back to the the uh, application process. Um, like I said, I'm 20 years old. I've, I've wanted to apply for a long time, pretty much since I finished school. 
Um, and I'm just working through the application process here, and um, I'm, I'm at the, the references, and pretty much anything that's like professional experience related, there's no issue like the security screening, character references, that sort of thing. Um, but when I get to the friends and associates, I, I honestly struggle a lot. Um, just for some personal reasons and just honestly getting busy uh, when I hit university, I, I, I lost a lot of personal relationships. And uh, the majority of my friends, I mean, for the most part, all of my friends are pretty much family and my wife now. So um, I, I guess my question is, is that a massive red flag um, kind of if I call it out on the application and, and include uh, an attachment just kind of explaining what I just said. Um, so yeah, I guess any, uh, I guess any info you have on that, or or, or just your opinion, would be uh, uh, definitely appreciated. I don't know if I'm just overthinking it, and I should honestly just throw in the application and see what happens. So thanks either way. Uh, I appreciate it, and I'll definitely be continuing to watch the show. Thanks. Thanks, dude, and thanks for your call. I didn't really understand your question. Are you saying you don't have enough friends to fill up that part? I forget. I think I need like eight people. I need like three associates, five friends. I grabbed old friends. I remember putting down old friends that I hadn't hung out in a while. Um, a friend is a friend. I, I think you are overthinking it, even though I don't really understand what you're saying. My parents' friends. People that have known me my entire life. They were my best interviews. My dad had a best friend. He knew me my entire life. His name was Cliff, and they went to Powell River and they interviewed him because I put him down. Uh, maybe that'll help you out a bit. If not, call back and ask me really. Are you, maybe you're saying that you just you don't have any friends. Well, I'm sure there's somebody you can consider a friend out there. Well, you're saying no. <laughs> I think that's what you're saying. Grab an old friend, man. You know, I think, did you say you're married? No, you're not married. You're 20. Did you? I can't even remember. I can't remember if you said your wife. Uh, yeah, you did. You said you're married, your wife. Your wife has friends. Right? My wife has friends. I'm friends with them. Uh, hmm. Keep on digging. I was very careful with that part. <laughs> On who I picked. And maybe I'll do a video on that. 604-330-2512. Call. You don't, if you don't want me to air it, say, Clint, don't air it. Ask, say a statement. Make a comment. Ask me a question. Hey, Clint. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Morgan. I live in Kelowna, British Columbia. And I'm 19 years old. Um, I'm currently in the application process for the RCMP right now. I've wanted to be a cop since I was probably five or six years old. Uh, nobody else in my family is a cop or a military, anything like that. Um, I mean, I don't know why I'm calling you. Honestly, I just, I like your input. I like what you have to say about things. And I feel I'm probably, hopefully going to get in. I uh, did the paramedic academy at the Justice Institute, um, the EMR course there failed it first time and then second time I got it. Um, I've been working security at a casino. I'm a gaming security officer. Um, I talk to a lot of cops. Every cop I find, uh, I always try to strike up a conversation with them and get their input on things and everyone has to say something different. So I don't know, man. I, uh, I just like your input on, on my situation and uh, see what you have to say. I hope you're doing well. And uh, yeah, stay safe. Love the channel. Cheers. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. I think you said your name was Morgan. And you know, and I don't know if I've already played this. And that's my biggest fear. You guys know that about me, that I'm going to replay a message and talk about it all over again. You know, you know what's funny? When you were talking about how whenever you see a police officer, you tr try to strike up a conversation. How's that going for you, Morgan? They're not the easiest people to talk to. Have you noticed? And I think a big... I think I used to be like that. 
Just a dead straight face. I wish I could change things. When I walked into a gas station to get a pack of smokes for the kids, I wish I said hi to everybody. How's your day going? Spoke to people, talked to them. I wish I did more, more, more of that instead of always looking angry. Uh, I went up to Whistler and I went by a couple and I said hi. And there, you know, one guy went, I, the other guy just looked down, looked away. <clears throat> Even in Victoria, you know, you see a couple of cops and there's just so much weighing on a cop's mind. I think that's the reason. And you're doing good. You're doing everything right. Okay, just enjoy life. You're, the path that you're going down sounds perfect. And you probably will be a cop one day. Hey, Clint, hope all is well. Sorry, I had a couple hang-up calls there. <clears throat> Every time I come up to talk to you. You're just nervous, okay? Got the way she's on her day off. Uh, what are you doing? Anyway, so uh, wrote my exam, filled it by just a very small margin. Uh, got a three. So they stopped the written exam. There's no more poly. Uh, they're catering to the fitness exam now portion of it goes by age height weight gender etc contact the recruiting office and just said you know hey uh no more exam can i just you know get my application through uh the only thing i had left to do was obviously pass the test and do the poly and uh the response was oh you still got to wait the six months so found it kind of a little bit odd kind of to get your perspective on that you know uh yeah. You know, there's no more written exam required, but I still have now I still have to wait because I wrote the exam the six months. Anyway, hope you have a keep it well and uh love the show. Thanks. Bye bye. Makes no sense, but that's the RCMP for you. It's like they they it's like they're like sometimes just like brain dead and clueless. And it takes forever for something to go like why would you be deferred? They defer you They get rid of the part that you were deferred for. You tell them that. And they say that you're still deferred for six months. Because of something that doesn't exist anymore. It's wacko. It's wacko. It doesn't make any sense. That stage doesn't exist. So you go to the next stage, but they're going to make you wait another six months <laughs> because you failed an exam that doesn't exist anymore. I don't know, man. You're right. It, do- it doesn't make any sense. They could easily get away from that. Sometimes they think you don't talk to the right people, but who's the right person? Who knows? Because there's no way, there's no point. There's no point of you still being deferred. Now, they defer you for six months. You could write the test in six months. Well, there is no test. So why would you have to wait six months? Why would they punish you on a stage that no longer exists? And they don't always follow the rules. I remember when I went through, you had to write the test every year. You weren't allowed to write it six months. In the final, I don't know. I wrote the test like six or seven times. I can't even remember. But I wrote the test and I said to myself, I got my mark. It was 3.8. 3.82 or something like that. Girls needed 3.2, I believe. 3.2 or 3.3 to pass. And it wasn't good enough for a white male, my 3.8. And I'm like, I'm not writing it again. There's no way I'm getting better than 3.8. It's just not going to happen for me. In a year had passed which means I have to write it again. I have to apply again. But after that year had passed, they lowered the score and they sent me a package that said, hey, your score is now good enough. It is so funny. I think back like I literally was not going to write it again. And I didn't write it again. Well, no, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't write it again. And I wasn't going to. And I feel pretty lucky that they sent me a package. They sent the package upstairs to the renters upstairs. They held on to it for over a month. I was lucky to get it. It was just a piece of, it was just a piece of paper in the mail. 
an envelope. I think they call them envelopes. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. They could be so clowny, dude. Just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. RCMP are so slow to adjust. And maybe that's what it is. But, you know what? Keep in touch. I know you've been trying for a while to get in. And I hope you do. Think you will. Hey, why not? Just keep on trying. Must be getting frustrating for you, though. And guys, will you call the hotline number 604-330-2512? I gotta go. It's sunny out. And I know the woman's home. She's probably already started drinking. We're going out to the lake, okay? And there's a slide. There's a slide on our dock. I shouldn't say this. <clears throat> but there's like a there was a weird 65 year old man walking up and down the dock. And, oh, this is this is like grinning, kind of goofy like, and you're kind of like, what's with this guy? He doesn't seem all there. And he's just he's kind of bugging me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I guess because the way he looked. And he comes over the slot comes over the slide, which is right beside me, okay? The slide is for kids. He's gonna go down the slide. A grown man. And I gotta watch this guy go down the slide. Wee and I'm annoyed. And he's climbing the steps to the slide and I'm like, oh He's not putting water down the slide. And I was so excited to watch his outcome as he slid down that slide and a little kid comes over and goes sir hold on and starts scooping water from the lake and throwing it onto the slide and i'm like no don't do that i want to see what happens and that's sick and demented anyways he went down about five times once on his stomach and i'm like dude get a life i hope he's not out there why am i so bitter and why can't I just be happy like last episode? Because I'm not day drinking, that's why. Okay, hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe. And I gotta do more of these, I know that. Okay. Bye bye. What's that?